Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to GBX and this is JAS39 Gripen, how Sweden built the world's best non-stealth fighter jet by the channel Military TV. What? What? What the fuck? So stealth implying uh, F-22, right? That's a stealth air dominance, like untouchable. Well, let's remove stealth element from it. Oh, look at that. Your enemy knows you're coming. This is the best one. So if like, let's just say if like F-22 versus JS-39, if they went toe to toe with each other and stealth is not a thing anymore because both know where they, each other are, this would kick F-22's ass. Is that what you're saying? But then again, I don't like, F can't the F-22 just like suddenly like, you know, just maneuver and just like get at the bottom of it or just like move around and it can't be picked up by JS-39's radar because of the stealth thing that alone makes F-22 powerful. So I guess anything that doesn't have stealth, this will kick its ass. Is that it? Like a Rafale? Rafale is not stealth, right? I still haven't went to Rafale video. I don't know how I, every time I miss it. I'm like, I'm going to do it. There's like, a, a, you know, there you go. The Rafale, Rafale, the plane that beat F-16. There's a video. I already put it in a watch letter list. Somehow I always miss it. Like I have to watch that, you know, after this, I guess. But yeah, this is like JS-39. Swedish plane. I didn't even know Swedish was a player at like a, a major scale like that. I know Sweden Empire. I know history. I've been watching like history videos for past, past three years or something since I started this channel. I, I, I like to think I know decent things. I know Swedish power, right? When it comes to like military. I didn't know in modern world they had anything like that. So uh, Sweden has a plane that is badass. Now that is interesting. All right, let's go this one. Yeah, so if you haven't seen my other reactions like this, I've been watching military style videos a lot. If you haven't seen reactions like this, check out the link in the description. There you find it, I guess, or in the end of the video, end card. YouTube is good at recommending these things. Damn, I'm, I'm jumpy right now because somehow my solid state logic, the SL, SSL2 audio interface is like acting up or something. But yeah, it's not. It's new, it's literally new, it's like a few months old. Like, what the hell? Or let's watch it. You are probably oh, familiar with famous jets like the U-2, F-16 Falcon, or F-22 Raptor. Yeah. Globally, these multi-role combat jets are well known for their superior features and offensive capabilities. But have you ever heard of the Saab JAS-39 Gripen? Saab made it! Why didn't you say that? Why didn't you start with that? Why didn't you say Saab JAS-39? Of course it's gonna be OP because it's Saab. They probably went over the top. They probably asked for a certain amount of money and like used more than twice of it and made a plane that is like four times as better than what their money should do. Saab is insane. Everything Saab does is insane. They're so, so good at everything. They, they got a car company and went bankrupt because they were going over the top with it. They were so strong and sturdy. So there you go. Even the Saab trucks are like, you know, yeah. Though Scania not as Saab famous as its right? U.S. counterpart, the Swedish fighter jet should not be underestimated when it comes to systems and capacity. Well, how amazing is it really? Manufactured by the Swedish aerospace and defense company Saab AB, JAS-39 Gripen is a light single-engine multi-role combat aircraft in service with the Swedish Air Force. The Gripen features a delta wing, which is a wing shaped in the form of a triangle. It also has a canard configuration with negative stability design and fly-by-wire flight system, replacing the conventional manual flight controls with an electronic interface. By 2020, more than 200 Gripens of various models A to F have been developed. Is it a new one? First, let's dig into the history of the JAS-39 Gripen. The development of JAS-39 Gripen began when Sweden sought to build new fighters to replace its aging Saab 35 Draken and Saab 37 Vigen in the late 1970s. Uh, For a defensive not, uh, dispersed uh, basing plan in the case of invasion... I don't know what the hell, this is like latest one like from 2020 or something? No, it's like, yeah. Like, all, like apparently all the other jets is like 80s or 90s plane. The Swedish Air Force needed a cheap Mach 2 aircraft with good short field performance. The concept included 800 meter long by 17 meter wide primitive runways from the Base 90 system. One goal was to make the plane smaller than the Vigan while maintaining or increasing its payload range performance. 
The Saab 38, also known as the B3LA, was proposed as an attack aircraft and trainer, and the A-20, a modification of the Vigan, was proposed as a fighter, attack, and maritime reconnaissance aircraft. The General Dynamics F-16 Fighting Falcon, the McDonnell Douglas F-A-18 Hornet, and the Northrop F-20 Tiger Shark were among the foreign designs which were studied and taken as references. In 1979, the Swedish government commenced a study for an all-around platform capable of JAS, which stands for Aerial Warfare, Close Air Support, as well as Reconnaissance, indicating multi-role capabilities to satisfy various roles during missions. A number of Saab designs were reconsidered, with Project 2105 being the most favorable, recommended to the government by the Defense Material Administration. Then, in the 1980s, the industrial arm of the Swedish Armed Forces consisting of several big corporations like Saab Scania, L.M. Ericsson, and Volvo Flagmotor established the JAS Industry Group. Wait a minute, isn't that like Ericsson from Sony Ericsson? I'm getting confused here. Why like all these military companies are also like somewhere else? Like, I, I don't know, man. Group has a joint venture. I'm pretty sure there was a company that joined a venture with Sony called Sony Ericsson. Is that the same Ericsson, like a mobile tower company or something? I don't know, man. I'm confused as fuck. The Gripen was first rolled out by Saab on April 26, 1987, at the company's 50th anniversary. The first flight on December 9, 1988 was actually delayed by 18 months due to some issues with the flight control system. Mm. Problems concerning the aircraft's avionics, particularly the fly-by-wire flight control system, FCS, and the relaxed stability design appeared during the test program. This problem caused the prototype to crash during an attempted landing at Linkoping ooh, ooh. on February 2, 1989, what about the pilot, man? with the test pilot Large Rydstrom surviving with a broken elbow. Oh. Pilot-induced oscillation. That is so fucked up, crashing at that low point, right? Because at any other point, like, pilot can just, like, parachute out. Just press the button, just, like, at that level. But I'm, like, parachute seats basically made so... Even if you're solo, it can just, like, jet up you, like, a few feet. And you can still like get out or something. I don't know. But you can't open parachute even at that level. Uh, yeah. That is just insane. Like anytime a crash at that low happens, like yeah, pilot is like completely screwed. But it's surprise only elbow damage. It was determined as the cause of the crash, which was caused by issues with the FCS's pitch control routine. Following the crash, the Saab and U.S. firm Calspan introduced software-related modifications to the aircraft. A partnership agreement between Saab military aircraft and British Aerospace was announced during the 1995 Paris Air Show. Uh. This cooperation between the two will form the joint venture company Saab BAE Gripen AB with the purpose of adapting, producing, marketing, and supporting Gripen at the international level. Uh. The partnership also involves the transfiguration of the A and B series aircraft to the export C and D series which encouraged the Gripen's compatibility with the standard of NATO. Now, let's take a look at the design and features embedded in the JAS-39 Gripen. One thing that probably differentiates Gripen from the rest of the four-plus generation fighters on the market is its small size along with... Okay, one thing I don't understand is, these countries are part of NATO, right? Oh, yeah, it's part of NATO. Yeah. And they're also part of like European Union. There are many organizations tying a lot of European countries together. So why like Fra France is creating like a Rafale, Sweden, Sweden is creating this kind of like a sub jet plane. Can they all like venture together and make one plane that they can share or something? Try to make the best plane they can. Why are they making different things where they're like part of the one like NATO and European Union? I don't know. Maybe that's not how it works, but still like, yeah. Saab is great. I don't know about Saab. I know Saab makes jet planes. So can they like team up with something uh, like the you know, British Aerospace and you know French something and yeah. With the low cost required to operate this aircraft, even though it's difficult to calculate the flyaway cost, the Gripen reportedly had the government spend less than sixty million dollars. Gripen also boasted its low operational cost, probably the lowest of any modern fighter jets. How oh, that happened with Saab? 
For its physical specs, the Gripen could take off at a maximum of 16,500 kilograms and is able to accelerate up to Mach 2. Notable for Ooh. its supercruise ability, Gripen has a range of approximately 1,500 kilometers. For either Beyond Visual Range Missile, BVR, and dogfighting combatants, Gripen is surely at the top of its class. The Gripen has a reputation for being user-friendly, with simple displays and a straightforward interface. In terms of lethality, the Gripen was the first fighter in the world to carry the lethal Meteor air-to-air -air missile, a beyond visual range BVR weapon capable of tracking and killing targets up to 80 miles away. Ooh. The Gripen C is capable of carrying four Meteor missiles, while the Gripen E is capable of carrying seven. Another interesting aspect of the Gripen is the addition of dedicated electronic warfare pods to the Gripen's already allegedly formidable onboard jamming capabilities. According to Saab, this is probably the most advanced EW suite carried by a fighter, making the Gripen a valuable commodity for suppression or destruction of enemy air defense dead missions. Ah, oh, yes. Lastly, now let's take a look at the operational history of the aircraft. A total of 204 Gripens were ordered by the Swedish Air Force in three batches. The first delivery was... I like how like one of the best planes in the world basically have their own pros and cons. And pros can make them really unique compared to every other jets, right? So it just comes down to like, if a, let's just say like a NATO, right, somehow goes to war with some, I don't know, like... Which two major parking things like Russia, China combined power or some shit. There you go, Axis is created now, NATO. If that happens, like a really good general would know like which countries, which plane to use for what purposes it can be used best that way. But if you don't know what the fuck you're doing, right? Even the best planes might not cut it because you don't know what you're doing. Right? So it's, it always comes down to like a good commander, I guess. Made to the fly Vakmanet on June 8, 1993, during a ceremony in Linkoping. The last of the first batch was sent on December 13, 1996. Mm, this is old the as first me, batch two sample was delivered to the Air Force on December 19, 1996. The Gripen has been exported to Hungary, the Czech Republic, Thailand, Brazil, and South Africa by Saab. Finland, Canada, Colombia, Botswana, Croatia, India, Indonesia, and the Philippines are among the countries that have expressed interest, with another dozen or so countries indicating some interest. I mean, India bought uh, a lot of Rafale. I don't think they're going to buy Gripen now, are they? Like, why have Rafale and Gripen? Like, who's better, Gripen or Rafale? Both have pros and cons. I don't know. Like, I'm pretty sure like, there has to be a video or something Trist. like that. Saab has been generally receptive to technology transfer and has made it easier for local companies to participate in the production process of some components. This has made the Gripen an interesting option for governments who struggle to explain where they spent the money to the skeptical public. Because of the involvement of British Aerospace Systems, the United Kingdom has an effective veto over the Gripen's export. Argentina has been unable to obtain the aircraft as a result of this. On the other hand, in the instance of Switzerland, the Gripen was caught up in the ongoing court case against right-wing agitator Julian Assange, as his supporters rallied against a referendum that would have authorized the Swiss Air Force to buy 22 fighter jets. Mm. What does this mean? New F-15 EX versus F-35, which is better? How are those two comparable? One is like a heavyweight you know like missile and ordnance carrier other oh, is like a stealth stealth jet multi-purpose thing those are not the same yeah there you go js39 gripen by saab you should put saab there i think saab is enough reputation that you should put that name there i guess right i don't know or maybe i'm biased because i like saab i don't know but yeah this like js39 gripen it has its own pros basically it can do its things like I guess other can do as well as it. But I don't know, I still like, which is better, that or Rafale? Obviously, F-22 is going to be better than it. Like any non-stealth one, like F-15, again, F-15EX is more like heavyweight carrier than anything. So nimbleness, I don't think, can compare to these planes, but yeah. All right, well, if you like my reaction, don't forget to subscribe. If you haven't seen other reactions I did like this, like military-style videos, check out the link uh, and the cards right now, and link in the description. And I'll see you next time.